We're gonna put a new one of those on there because I mean, you've got two screws there, one there and one there. It's, that takes a lot of time. I mean, a lot of time. You can just, you're gonna have to get a, a permit and seven people to come watch you to make sure you don't, you know, cut your finger, but you gotta pull off that black and that red and that brown. And that's, that's, that's gonna take a lot of time to do, so. The best thing to do, I would say, is definitely chop off the wire. Don't replace the fan limit switch and just let it go. And said no one. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. Do you hear what I hear? An evaporator, an evaporator. Looks like it's kind of cold. It's got ice going everywhere. So they're complaining that this thing is not cooling the box very well. Can't imagine why. Got ice back here on it. Yep. And somebody just adjusted the defrost that I just not even two weeks ago or so, three weeks ago. So now we're gonna check it out and see what we got going on. You ready to get started? Oh yeah, and by the way, this door is totally shot. Check this out. It's got a couple problems. Just a couple problems. Let's see what we got. I have not had to work on the freezer here before. All right, well, anyhow, let's go up. Oh yeah. Frosty, frosty coming all the way back, sweet. Let's take a look at this defrost, see how jackaroni this is and how bad this condenser coil looks. It is quite the electrical job there. <laughs> that is so nice. That is, that's pretty nice. You got a, you got a block there holding it. That's pretty good. Sight glass looks like it's clean. Coil looks halfway clean. As good as can be. Let's see what our defrost is doing. We've got two defrosts for 45 minutes, and you got three of them for 15 minutes. Yeah, let's not do that. Why couldn't we maybe have just used a termination switch and made sure that works? I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I can tell you right now probably where our issues are, are lying, possibly. Well, I like that, that looks nice. I like it when the wire is just barely underneath there. It's always comforting. Let's make sure this clock's tracking time. Let's see if this thing's even hauling the biscuits to the bakery. So right now it is 324. That air is set for 1600, so it's not really accurate. Let's watch it for a little touch. While we're watching it, you can come over here to the Green Goblin see that somebody must have had a hard time finding a leak and put green dye in there. That's always a good thing to know. About 99% of the things that we work on, usually 30, 35 minutes and four of them for my area. So we went ahead and switched it to that. Termination should be shutting this down if it's actually getting warm enough. We're gonna time this thing. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and just kick it right into defrost. Let's go ahead and put us a big old row of defrost here. There, it just clicked. Make sure it pumps down. Make sure it pumps down correctly. Make sure the pressure switch is working. Got a new cover for this. I got a new one, but I'm gonna finish breaking this one. Oh, there it shut off. There we go. Let's go ahead and start the stopwatch. There we go, got that started. We'll see how long this thing runs. It's gotta be melted out anyway. There's a couple chunks of ice down there. Let's see where we're at. I usually like to see it pump down and not hook onto it while it's in possibly negative if things ain't working right. Good thing that right there is only for keeping the dirt out because it's uh, got no O-ring in it. Good deal, so at least we know that it's not pulling into a negative. That JB Gage actually's uh, got that glow in the dark stuff, so it's kind of cool. See it? That kind of cool? Yeah. 
So I just walked back up here and this door was not shut. Um, you can see that didn't just happen because it's already melting ice that was on the, on the door. Um, they don't have their door hangers on there. So what I wanted to do is come in here and see how much and what all it takes for this to melt. Um, I just noticed something. Okay, good. The heat tape is going through the center of it at least. I can feel the heat tape. So usually we insulate it even if, oh, that's a really bad sign. So it goes down to there. Where does that go to? It goes out the wall. Let's go over here and make sure that actually has heat tape on the other side. That could cause some problems. Yeah. Pushing it don't happen too much, it looks like. All right. So the heat tape comes to there. It's really lovely. And then comes over and looks to me like it comes off the string. It's the floor. It eventually gets over there to the, so they, that's kind of how they did their drains on their uh, sinks there. You can see the sinks just bounce off of it. Ooh, it's hot there, warm. There's no liquid yet. See so probably why they don't want to shut it. Could you imagine being a little 110 pound? girl trying to pull that open. You're not gonna be able to get it. You about need a crowbar out there to help pull on it. You can see we've tried to blow, somebody's tried to blow it out, it looks like here. You can hear the heaters melting the ice. Wow. Yeah. So it is working. Okay, and there's heat down here on this pan. But are we getting water? Looks like it's draining to it. There we go. So it's got quite a heater element there. So our problem is not an accumulation of water in the pan, obviously. But when you come to the front side here, you can see we're not getting that heat all the way to the front. So we got us a problem there, Bob. We got us a big old problem. Now we can go ahead and hop in here and see where our defrost termination's at. So far we are at nine minutes and 55 seconds. So as you can see, a 15 minute defrost ain't gonna do much for us. Not a good idea. I've not seen too many regular walk-in coolers with a 15 minute defrost work. Usually you can get away with that with some, of the little piddly dink ones that you have at like say Subway or some crap like that. Yeah, that thing's pretty deep. Pretty deep. Yep, and then the defrost termination switch is right there. I don't know, I don't think that was replaced. And right here is the uh, X terminal. Generally X terminal means termination. See that right there? See where that little thing's cut off right there. Yeah, that went to this little wire right here that somebody chopped off. This restaurant has been hodgepodgery uh, for a while now, and it's got plenty of problems. That thermostat looks like it could use a little help too. That's, uh, that's really nice. And there is the switch. That's really wonderful. No cover on it. Yeah, I've never been here before. Let's just say I'm not overly impressed at all. Yeah, see this right here? See that right there? See how the, see how the uh, plastic there, it's split. Defrost termination's not working properly. So instead of replacing it, we just bypassed it and chances are the fans are probably not coming on. So yeah, it's, that's really sweet. So we're gonna put a new one of those on there because I mean, you've got two screws there, one there and one there. It's, that takes a lot of time. I mean, a lot of time. You can just, you're gonna have to get a, a permit and seven people to come watch you to make sure you don't, you know, cut your finger, but you gotta pull off that black and that red and that brown. And that's, that's, that's gonna take a lot of time to do. So 
The best thing to do, I would say, is definitely chop off the wire. Don't replace the fan limit switch and just let it go. And said no one. All right, so we've got it here. You can see, like I said, that shot to crap. A little switch mechanism and stuff in there is bad. You can see that looks bad. Uh, that comes right out here to these wires right here. So there's your black for fan, brown for termination, red is going usually to in. Got there, yep, in. So all we gotta do is replace that little turd. Put the defrost at 45 minutes. And if you're having problems with it terminating and it's not terminating fast enough, you can take that switch and move it closer to these elements or you can move it higher, heat rises, and that'll cause it to shut off a little bit quicker. Don't do stuff like this, guys. Don't let uh, people show you to do stuff that's just half-ass. You're not gonna go anywhere quick by doing stupid stuff like that. That is not the way to do it. So let's go get the switch and get it put in there and see if we can melt the rest of the size. Got us a brand new fancy, fancy 59L, 590L. 5709, there we go, 5709. Got a little crimp on here. Now you definitely don't wanna hook onto this wire. You'll get your your poop in a group real quick when it shocks the snot out of you. Um, we are right now at 23 minutes. And although the back looks pretty good, the front still got some buildup on it. Back looks really good. The, uh, like I said, the front, it still, it still has room for improvement. We'll likely have to get a pump sprayer and melt it, but 30 minutes is gonna be plenty. We're not gonna have to go uh, 45 minutes. Generally, 30 is fine. So once you do it on a routine basis, say every six hours, now granted, if they're gonna sit there and leave that door open because they can't open it or whatever the case, you're not gonna overcome the humidity levels that they're gonna let in here. And then, you know, just can't fix stupid, but you can charge for it. So, you know, you just gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, let's go ahead and be careful not to get zapped. Let's get that out of there. We'll hook that back up. Like that. Black is the fan, but look at that, I, I just, too much time, too much time, too much time. Now you gotta be careful here. I don't recommend doing this live at all. Uh, it could cause you know, a little bit of heartache. That's not hooked up yet, so not a big deal. This one here went to the red fan, or red uh, in. Hopefully it's in the right spot. And this goes back to fan. Oh, yep. There we go. All right, and then we'll hook this back up to here. I'm using my drill as a prop stand, but yeah, we'll hook that up there. Um, it'll go just like that right there. Okay, we got one zipper zipper here. This, for the most part, is termination fan only, so this, it doesn't have any current going through it. I wasn't thinking. Uh, the limit switch there is what has uh, power going through for the heater, so I wasn't thinking. Something about working and talking at the same time, kind of an issue sometimes. So we're gonna put it back to default. It works for probably 25 years, <laughs> 20 years since you know it's been installed. Yeah, and then here's that live wire you gotta be real careful with. You don't wanna get the Zapparoni on it. We're just gonna be careful not to touch any of the metal on that. Bad example, I know. Bad example. Sometimes you just can't find the breaker box and you don't wanna be, you know, do you wanna get zapped? You learn how to be creative. Here's that. You gotta make sure that don't touch nothing, which right now it's holding pretty good. We got it mounted in there. Like I said, we could mount that thing a little closer to it. I don't know if I really need to. I kind of feel like, do should I, should I not? Um, we're still pulling some amperage there. We're at 29 minutes. Like I said, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to melt some of that coil down. I'm just gonna leave it where it's at. It's not, I shouldn't have to re-engineer this. We can test this, see if the kick out works. Yep, it works. So we know that works. Let's go ahead and since we did that, let's go upstairs and unhook that and we'll put it back into defrost. We'll actually just shut it down because we need to melt that out. As you can see too, the fans didn't come on immediately, which means there's a time delay there. So, yippee skippy. 
that's gonna have to get really nice and cold. That glass is still full, so let's go ahead, just kill it. Uh, it'd be nice if we was pumping down. We're gonna have to come in here on the X terminal, and unhook X before we can put it back into a defrost to pump it down. Oh, for God's sakes. That's why that crap should have crimp on. It's not this rinky dink jackery crap they got going on. That is probably feeding the heaters. So that poor connection there is not giving a very good connection to the heaters. So we're going to, because that usually jumps from there to the heaters where the heaters at. Yeah. So the heater wire number four. It may be catching it off the other. Either way, we're gonna clean that up. I don't know, guys. It just ain't that hard to do stuff right. It irritates me. It really does. All right, now we've got that crimped on there. Got a new crimp on there. And uh, we're good to go. So now we can turn it on. It should go right into defrost, which it just did because we're still in the middle of that. We're still in the middle of that defrost there because when I kicked it out, it pretty much just completely bypassed it. That's why I had to shut it down the way I shut it down because this here is gonna kick it out immediately. As soon as it, uh, it basically there's a solenoid on the back side of this that triggers uh, the switches on the back, actually on these here, they, they don't have that, but internally it basically triggers the switch and kicks it out. On a mechanical one, there's a solenoid and it will uh, trigger and move a slider and make it kick out. So we're gonna go ahead and let this continue to heat up. Uh, we're gonna go grab a pump sprayer and start melting the uh, ice. And I don't feel like dicking with the uh, freaking pump sprayer, so we're gonna use this. Yeah, I think it'll make it most of the way. Sure it will. We got the shrouds taken off. I'm gonna try to just shoot right through here to the pieces I need. That way I don't have to dink around. Uh, won't really get it on the motors. But yeah, we're definitely gonna make sure that uh, drain works here when it's all said and done. All just when you didn't think it could get much better, we find out we've got a leak here because something got broke. Fantastic. How did it get broke? Well, probably when they slammed this freaking piece of crap into it, it snapped the damn plastic. And now you've got that heater through the center of it as far as taking it apart. Yeah, so it's gotta come through there. You have to undo that and then do it all over again because stands are on wheels. And then somebody probably came in here, he hauling around and smashed it. Oh, there's the thing for the thermostat. Yeah, that was optional. Well, I was able to unplug that. Let's go and grab my cutters and we'll see if we can take this end off of this freaking plastic thing. Hopefully I don't cut my hose in half. Yeah, that's really fancy nice. Eh, it didn't do much. I guess that's not that big of a deal. I've got the generic non-pack out crap because it's cheap. So probably gonna need a 90 and a coupling, maybe two couplings. Grab a cutter up there. The only thing nice about plastic, besides the fact that it broke like it did, is that it goes together fairly easy. Okay, what I did is I run it around it to where it just barely cuts into it, yanked it backwards out of there, just pull it off, and, uh, do what you can do with it. Okay, I had to use the pliers there to be able to get the damn thing pulled through. I should be able to glue this crap together and wrap it up. Um, I may try to make this sink in a little further so it doesn't get snapped off again. Not gonna be adjusted up and down. The biggest thing, I mean, if you put this against the wall, it won't have nothing to pry against. And then most people will put a block of wood or something or some sort of block against the plastic so it can't get snapped off. Put that clamp there, so hopefully that'll be a bumper against that. So when the next end of all comes through and smashes it into it, may not break it. Yeah, it, it, it's hard to, to do anything without smashing something. I mean, if you're a total idiot, things are gonna get broke. I mean, that's, that's just all there is to it. So yeah, now, they smash into it really. I don't think you can really break it now. You're gonna hit that clamp there. And it's closer to the wall now too. Whereas before it wasn't against the wall like that. It's just, you know, 
Harry Potter stuff, that's all I can say. All right, let's plug that back in. Hopefully it don't trip. Ooh, I can feel it. I can see a little bit of a sparkage. That's scary. I wonder what that hole's from. <laughs> yeah, nice quality. Oh yeah. All right, well, we pretty much got the whole inside now melted. Didn't even have to do much. We got just a little bit there and a little bit there. The coils on the inside, for the most part, are melted. So we got to just melt those two little spots and we'll be good to go. Freezer feels pretty comfortable in here right now, so they're gonna have to pull this all back down in temperature again. The bread's definitely not frozen. Okay, it kicked right on as I was getting the last two bolts in there. Uh, missing one here, so I'm gonna go get that and get this cover on. As you can see, it's frosty because of all the moisture in here. All of our wires are hooked back up. Let's get her back together, hopefully. I hate when they do stuff like that. That's just haphazard. Let's all get out. All right, so we've got the X terminal hooked back up there. We have all the other terminals corrected that were half-assed laid in there. We're gonna turn this back to normal, and we're gonna set the clock right now. It's five o'clock, so we want 17. There's 17. And I am going to go ahead and set it for 45 minutes. Let the defrost termination do its job. And we'll call it a day. So everything's set up. Sometimes half hour is plenty, but for right now, I'm not Phil Parton with it. The sight glass looks like it is still clear. Suction pressure running negative five on 404 because that's about what we are. So, all right, so we got some new caps on there. Looks the same, but they're not. We know the pressure switch works, contactor looks about as good as can be expected. This place uh, does not want to spend much money on anything. Okay, looks like we're set for about negative 10. Go ahead and put this back on. A little more safe than what it was. Yep. Negative 10, pretty normal. Don't like none of that, but we'll save that for another day. Check that heat tape, make sure it's working. One more time. I think it tripped. That really wouldn't surprise me because there's water all over it. Nope, it was good. So that must be red all the time or whatever. All right. All right, guys, that's, that's gonna wrap this one up. It's five something, 5.30, whatever. It's running. I'm not gonna sit here and watch it cycle down to zero. It's not gonna happen. I'm on call, I got things to do. Uh, just brain dead, stupid stuff like this just blows me away. It should have been taken care of. Uh, so anyhow, we replaced the switch, fixed the drain, melted the coil, on to the next one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, I'll see you on the next one. Later.